Hey everybody, I'm going to do a really quick video today. Um, it's probably going to be in two parts, uh, so bear with me. I'm going to do a step-by-step -step, uh, process for resin on larger uh, panels and canvases. I don't recommend doing it on canvases because you get that puddle in the middle. So I will be talking exclusively regarding uh, about uh, panels today. This is a 20 by 24 panel. It's probably the smallest panel that I've been working on lately. I usually do much larger pieces, but the process is the same. Now, what makes this different from normal projects is when you're working on a large piece, I always do two coats, two layers of resin, because if I try to do one layer, there's always problems. There's always uh, fish eyes or dust or hair that ruins the piece. And by the next morning when it dries, you have to sand it down and redo another coat anyway. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare and how to pour your first coat. And then in the next video, I will show you how to sand it down and finish off with a new coat. So first of all, I'm going to take my piece and remove it from my workspace because I want to prepare the area. So one of the things I do to remove dust from the area is take a squirt bottle and just squirt the area that I'm working in, including the floor, because dust will come up and float around. So once you have that done to your liking, you would tape your pieces. So I've already pre-taped three of my edges on this piece, including the bottom. I don't like resin on my edges. I like to paint them and varnish them so that the, the main focal point is the top of the piece. So I've already done that. However, I've left one side um, for you so I can show you how I prepare the edges with the tape. Now, I only use one type of tape because it's a, I've determined that it's the best one in all the years I've been doing it, and it's called tuck tape. It's super, super sticky. You can get it at most hardware stores. Um, but the one trick that I have found is when you cut it into the length of the board that you're going to be putting it on, it's so sticky that sometimes it will remove the wood from the panel. It will sliver the wood or peel back strips of wood. So in order to make it a little bit less sticky, I just do that. Or you can rub it against a towel, put it down on a towel and peel it back off. And it just takes away some of the stickiness on the, the tape. And then I will go to my piece and I will apply it to the side, leaving no lip. In this particular example, I'm not leaving a lip at all, so it's flush with the board. I'll show you in a moment. So once you get that on, you rub the edge to make sure it's secure. And there you go. So once you have that done, you'll have all four edges done, and you can see the bottoms is done as well, just in case there's runoff. Next, I have my plastic sheet down. This is my countertop, um, which is a great space for me for these size pieces. Otherwise, I use a larger table. And I have empty tins that when I place them down, I can put the piece right on top of the cans so it keeps them balanced. And if there's resin that needs to fall off the edges, um, it doesn't stick the piece to the ground or to the, the surface of the, the countertop. So I'll do that. And I already have my materials handy. So I have a stir stick for the resin. I have a smaller stick for the edges. I have a glove, glove for spreading. And I have my resin right here ready to be mixed. So let's get started with the mixing of the resin. So I have my one part hardener, one part resin. Follow the instructions from the company that you're using. This particular company is Art Resin, so they have a one-to-one -one ratio. 
measure it out try not to eyeball it you want exact ratios and don't think that adding more hardener will make your piece harden faster that's not how resin works so just remember equal parts and while I'm doing this I will mention a few things if you are resining over a mixed media piece so any piece that you used paper or watercolor paper or anything like that you need to seal it first so make sure that you have a varnish sealer or a polyacrylic sealer some kind of sealer before you apply the resin because if you don't the resin might creep under the paper and make your paper look wet it'll leave like a wet mark almost like if you get a piece of um, newspaper wet it'll leave a little splotch so that's something you definitely do not want so ensure that you seal all your mixed media pieces prior to putting on resin i would suggest maybe two or even three coats of whatever product you decide to use okay i'm going to put on my glove before i mix because i'm already getting resin all over myself all right so here we go and they recommend three minutes of stirring your resin so make sure you have a really good mix now I've already cleaned off my piece um, so it's I know that it's there's no dust on it everything is great it's ready to be resined so make sure you do that with yours as well I don't recommend spraying it with that spray air that just moves dust around and as you know dust is your enemy you also want to make sure you have some kind of cover prepared so that once we've poured the resin you need to have it uh, covered for 24 hours otherwise dust is going to get in and contaminate your resin and you might not think that's a problem but one piece of dust can totally change the surface of a resin piece you can get these fish eyes which is where the resin pulls away from itself you can get what looks like wrinkles all that kind of idea and what I'm doing today is a little bit different than what other videos you might have seen I'm doing a resin hand spread so in other words I'm not using my tools as much as I normally would to spread this resin I'm going to use my hand and why I'm doing that is because this is just the first coat so it's not going to be perfect there's going to be contaminated spots there's going to be spots where the resin doesn't really cover the piece as much as I would like normally but I know that already because I already have planned a second top coat okay so keep that in mind if this was a one coat project we'd have much more resin and I'd be using a much better tool but there are imperfections in my painting already that I know the resin is going to resist so I already know that I need two coats of resin all right so here we go there's no special way to spread your resin I personally like just going around the sides and then finishing off in the middle and I put my cup upside down now while that is sitting there and the resin is seeping down from the cup I need to go and make sure that I have my blowtorch and my heat source handy so give me two seconds all right that was fast so I have my blowtorch and my lighter some of you might not have a blowtorch you might have a um, craft torch or a heat gun either one works fine whichever you choose but I will give you the warning don't over torch your piece once you've poured your resin you've spread it and you want to get those bubbles out with the torch or the heat gun don't overdo it you will scorch the resin and you may not notice it at the time but when your piece dries and you look at it on a tilt in the sun 
you'll see waves of resin like marks almost like wrinkles and you don't want that so don't over torch so now that my resin is there and we're good to go I'll put that over here and like I said I'm not normally I would use my spreader tool and I would spread the resin evenly across the whole board you're more than welcome to do that if you're doing uh, one coat I would recommend it at the same time I would grab my stir stick and I would use it to gently go over to the sides and ensuring that the resin did not go past the sides I would just edge the resin bit by bit across the whole piece um, that way you're not wasting resin going over the sides it's all staying here but in this case I want a quick and dirty resin because I know I'm putting on a second coat so I'm getting my hand involved so I put my hand right in the resin and I'm going to spread it across the piece now in areas that I know have spots that I know the resin is going to resist I'm going to massage the resin in a little bit more than usual so I have a piece here that I it's already resisting the resin so I'm going to grab some more resin and really really rub it into that spot to get rid of any contaminants that the painting or the paint itself might have against the resin and you might be wondering what contaminants could be in paint well I'll let you know in white paint specifically there's a lot of ammonia so especially those people that use white house paint for their pieces which is a very economical um, choice or option over the art paint it's not as archival which means it won't last as long and stay as bright as art work white paint but it's still a viable option however the downside is that it does have a lot of ammonia in it now the downsides of ammonia when it comes to resin is the resin will at times push away from that white paint it doesn't really like the ammonia it's like um, soap detergent and oil it'll kind of pull away have a chemical reaction which we don't really want so in cases like that you really have to massage the resin into the painting and almost force that um, relationship so you're going to do this at your own pace I've been doing it for a little long time so I know what pace I can go when you get to the corners just slow down make sure that you're not wasting any resin with it pouring over the sides you may lose a little bit here and there but that's not a big deal people that pour a lot of resin and have it just cascading over the, the sides that's just money and if you know if you've been working with resin for a long time you'll realize that resin is expensive so I really don't want to be wasting a half a cup of resin down the sides of my pieces where I could be using it uh, on a second coat so I'm just massaging this resin in making sure that it's evenly distributed across the piece all the nooks and crannies are getting filled nicely my edges are looking great and once you have that done you don't have to go be a, a perfectionist at this stage because once again you know you're going to be doing a second coat so if you miss a spot or if you already see that the resin is pulling away from the painting don't worry about it okay so once you have that done I'm going to take off my glove inside out it's take it and throw it in the garbage right away and then I'm going to grab my heat source once again I'm gonna you can have a, a blowtorch or a heat gun it's up to you I'm just gonna make sure that my painting is level so that I'm not wasting resin there we go it was not level and now I'm going to torch lightly This might be a little bit loud, you won't hear me, so long strokes, quick, nothing pinpointed.
I find that bubbles tend to congregate at the edges. And that's it. We are done with the torch. We don't want to over torch it. Now, any bubbles that might come up, we can handle that in a few minutes. I can already see the resin is pulling away from some of the parts on the piece. I'm not worried about that because I know I'm going to be putting on a second piece or putting on a second coat. So now what I want to do is I need to cover this up. So I have really handy some paint cans. So I'm going to put a paint can on each corner of the piece. Just need one more. Right there. And I already have another painting that I had already finished that I really don't need anymore. And I'm going to use that to cover this piece. But what I want to do first is away from this painting because resin hates water away from the painting i'm just going to spray this down and wipe it off to make sure that there's no dust on it that could fall onto the piece so i'm just going to walk over here to another area give it a squirt take my rag wipe it down just remove any of the dust that could be sitting on top of the piece. Now I'm just going to lift it up and place it right over the piece. Now, if you want, if you were doing this as a final coat, one, one coat only, I would cover this up in plastic. Every side, really keep it hibernated for 24 hours. Because we know, I've said it a million times, we're going to be doing a second coat. I'm really not overly concerned if dust comes onto the piece because we'll be sanding it away anyway. So that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video, which we will be sanding down that next layer, removing the tape, adding a new fresh layer of tape, and then adding a top coat of resin. All right, until then, I'll see you later. If you have any questions, just let me know. Leave a comment in the bottom. Night, everybody.